How to read graphs. Hi everyone, welcome back. Let's talk a little bit about graphs. Many students really dislike graphs because they find it really bizarre. They see graphs and go, "What is this? I give up. What the hell?" Well, every graph tells a story. Let's start from a number line. Let this be the quantity of sweets. Suppose I have ten sweets. How can we express this on a number line? Just draw a dot here. Twenty sweets. Dot here. What about negative ten sweets? A dot here. But negative ten sweets doesn't really make sense in economics. So we can drop the negative region of this number line and just start from zero. What else do you notice? You realize that as you move to the right, the number gets larger. Likewise, when you move to the left, the number gets smaller. All right, let's look at the vertical number line. Let this be the price of sweets. Suppose the price of a sweet is ten cents. How do we express this on the number line? Draw a dot here. The price of a sweet is now twenty cents. A dot here. Thirty cents. A dot here. You get the idea. What about having the price of a sweet as negative ten cents? Okay. We can draw a dot here, but you see, it doesn't make sense for the price of a sweet to be negative. So again, we can just drop the negative region of the number line. What else do you observe? You realize as you move upwards on the number line, the price increases. As you move downwards, the price decreases. But you see. It's not very meaningful to just have number lines. It doesn't really tell us any more information beyond what we already know. So maybe we can combine these number lines together to create a graph. In which cases can a graph be useful? Suppose you are a supplier of sweets. You will be interested in the relationship between the price of sweets. And the quantity of sweets supplied. Okay, let's pretend that all of us are sweet suppliers. The price of a sweet is ten cents. How many of you want to supply sweets? All right, not a lot of interest here. Let's say ten sweets are supplied. Suppose the price of a sweet increases to twenty cents. How many of you are interested in supplying sweets now? Hmm, more interest. Makes sense, don't you think so? When the price of sweets gets higher, you'll make more money. So let's say twenty sweets are supplied. Suppose the price of a sweet increases again to thirty cents. Wow, more money. More people want to produce sweets now. Thirty sweets produced, and so on. We can express this data in the form of pros, just like this. But this looks really long and bleh, yuck. Can you think of a better way to express this data set? How about drawing a table? Tada! Much more pleasing to the eye. You can look at the numbers. You see, when the price of a sweet increases from ten cents to twenty cents, the quantity of supply of sweets increases from ten to twenty. When the price of a sweet increases from twenty cents to thirty cents, the quantity of supply of sweets increases from twenty to thirty. So on and so forth. Then you conclude that as price of sweets increases, quantity of supply of sweets increases. 
there is a direct relationship between the price of sweets and the quantity of sweets supplied. Um, this is still not very efficient. Notice that we have to look at the numbers one by one on this table before we can arrive at a conclusion. The relationship between the price of sweets and the quantity of sweets supplied is not evident at first glance. That's why we need graphs. Using this table, we can plot a graph. How? By combining the vertical and horizontal number lines that we have seen earlier. When the price of a sweet is 10 cents, the quantity supplied is 10. When the price increases to 20 cents, the quantity supplied increases to 20. 30 cents, 30, and so on. And guess what? You can join the dots together and form a line. Notice that this line slopes upwards. What does this mean? As the price of sweets increases, the quantity of sweets supplied increases. The price and the quantity of sweets supplied move in the same direction. It's a direct relationship. So remember, upward sloping curve equals to direct relationship. Graphs. So concise, so clear, better than tables, much better than prose. Ha! Huh. Now, we've managed to figure out how the supply curve looks like by working from scratch, starting from number lines and tables. Let's approach another problem in a different way. What is the relationship between the price of sweets and the quantity of demand of sweets? Well, this is the graph. You mean, we can start with a graph without first drawing number lines and tables? Yes, we can. We can work backwards. Notice that this line slopes downwards. What does this mean? When the price of a sweet is 10 cents, quantity of sweets demanded is 50. Suppose price increases to 20 cents. Will there be fewer or more people willing and able to buy the sweets now? Take note, the price is higher now. You're right, there are now fewer buyers for the sweets. Quantity of sweets demanded drops to 40. When price increases again to 30 cents, quantity of sweets demanded drops to 30. So you realize that when price increases, quantity of sweets demanded decreases. The price and quantity of sweets demanded move in opposite direction. There is an inverse relationship between price and quantity of demand of sweets. When the line slope downwards, there is an inverse relationship. Remember, downward sloping graph equals to inverse relationship. To summarize, graphs are useful in economics because compared to tables, graphs show us the relationship between different things quickly. For instance, when the line slopes upwards, there is a direct relationship between X and Y. When the line slopes downwards, there is an inverse relationship between X and Y.